Hi guys, friends, this is Pete, N6QW, and today I wanted to spend a little time with uh, my uh, recently acquired Drake TR7. Actually, the acquisition is uh, a Christmas present, a gift to me from my son and daughter-in-law, and um, I was presented this uh, TR7, serial number 1394, on Christmas Day, and they uh, played out told me it was something that they bought for me off of eBay it was the parts only tech special and uh, Interestingly enough um, When you went through the band switch, which is right here on the lower bands uh, up to 20 meters that reading on that display was 95 megahertz and when you go to 15 and the 10 meter position that number would go to 10 megahertz and it was a fixed number. In other words, you could tune the VFO and nothing would happen. It would just show 95 megahertz or 2 megahertz or 10 megahertz rather. So uh, it seemed like there was lots of problems. It didn't transmit or receive. So uh, they said, here, you can have fun with this. And uh, indeed fun. It took me six weeks to find out what the problem was, why it wasn't receiving us. There are two voltage controlled oscillators that that are part of the frequency scheme and it's very interesting how drake does this uh they up convert everything to 48.05 megahertz as the first if and then from there they have a 53 megahertz uh, heterodyne signal which uh, gets you down to about five megahertz which is the second if and of course they got a five megahertz uh, crystal filter in there and using a, a bunch of master oscillators on the passband tuning board they mix all these various uh, crystal frequencies so that you get the uh, the proper frequency scheme so it's everything up conversion and essentially the uh, vco operates from 48 megahertz to 70 megahertz a 30 megahertz span so everything is uh, converted down to uh, 48 megahertz <clears throat> 48.05 which is the first if so essentially uh, I did find that when I had just those two readings, the 95 megahertz and the 10 megahertz, many of the functions were working, like the passband tuning and RIT, and you could go to the modes, you could uh, plug in uh, different filters. There's only one filter in there, but when you went to the other filter positions, it dropped out. You could hear the crystal calibrator. So um, it just, there were things working in here. Oh, and I found out the push to talk and box work. There were things working in here, but it was not receiving as it should. So uh, one of the one thing I did do is I narrowed it down to about four boards, which was the digital display board here, the voltage control aux uh, oscillator board, uh, the the frequency translator board, and uh, and one which is digital control board. So those four boards are involved with with the VCO and it has a uh, PLL on that so I said look if I take the PLL and just uh, the VCO rather and just disconnect it and inject a signal in the range of 48 to 78 megahertz this thing ought to work and guess what it did so that's when I knew that those four boards were the area of, of interest and then I later traced it down to the voltage controlled oscillator that has an op amp in there that provides the voltage controlled uh, final frequency and and uh, the uh, the RF to go into the uh, the mixer stage there and there was no voltage on one of the pins and what that led me to is this board right here which is an internal DC power supply board and it has a 24 volt regulator 78L24 on it and it was blown so I then uh, went back and <clears throat> supplied 24 volts to, to the pin where that normally would connect. And then the receiver worked. So we got the correct frequencies and everything else. So I knew it was that, that simple regulator. 38 cent part. I ordered them. And I ordered them right in the middle of a snowstorm from Digikey. And they got lost for about a week. So it was very frustrating. But anyway, we did get the receiver working okay. And uh, then I turned my attention to the transmit board, and, and the transmit board is not totally fixed. We have uh, good frequency, good uh, power output, and uh, on the bands 20 and 40 meters, but the 160 meters, the 
signal looks terrible. Uh, CW, if, you, if you put it in the CW mode and just sort of sn sniff the RF from the CW, it looks terrible. But on the higher frequencies like uh, 15, uh, 17, 12, uh, and 10 meters, uh, you get you get uh, RF, you, you get a nice sine wave on CW, and you can see the sideband signals. But what you don't see is the same power level as exists on 20 and 40 meters. You can get about 135, 140 watts. And uh, on 10 meters, you'll get down to about 70 or 80 watts. So there's something, something awry, and I'm not sure what it is. But I think I'm thinking maybe... So it might be the high-pass filter... Or the low pass filter actually that's the low and this is the high here and they series these to form a band pass filter so uh, i was thinking that maybe that's potentially what the problem is so anyway pete here we're uh, playing with this uh, having a little fun i'm going to switch it over here to uh, 20 meters and the antenna is tuned to 20 meters and as a matter of fact what i'll do is i'll put it in the cw mode and uh, i have a snoop loop here into the compartment where the low pass filter is and if I do that you can see the scope here that's the CW and the CW signal looks pretty good a bit more here so it's a nice uh, nice sine wave no distortion there and no two and three pieces to it like you're getting some uh, some uh, harmonics in there. Now, if I switch that to uh, upper sideband, uh, you can see the upper sideband pattern. And we're hitting about, uh, even though it's it's peaking uh, about 130, 140 watts, uh, we uh, we're getting a nice, pretty nice sideband pattern too here. Let me just see if we can do this in a way. Hello, radio. Uh, November 6, uh, Quebec whiskey. So the sideband pattern, Christmas tree looks okay. And uh, we're hitting maybe uh, not on full peak, but uh, close to about 100 watts. There, we're hitting about 150 uh, whistling into the mic, but just on the peak power, it, the meter doesn't follow as fast. So anyway, we're, we're having some fun uh, working with this transceiver. We need to get it fixed, but... Uh, it's been a le real learning experience. Uh, you find that uh, there's a lot of tribal knowledge uh, that Drake had that they don't share with you. Like I went nuts trying to find the bias setting for the final amplifier brick right here. And I couldn't find any. And, and then I realized there is none. But they didn't make that real clear that you don't set the bias. You know, typically a lot of transceivers, one of the first things they do is to set the bias. You know, uh, half an amp or one amp or something like that. So I don't know what it is. And um, I, I think because I can get full power on 80, 40, and 20, that the brick is okay and the driver stage and the pre-driver is okay. It's just something likely in the bandpass filter or it could be in some pin diodes. As I understand, there's a bunch of high power pin diodes to do some switching in somewhere in this area here. And the pin diodes, the high power ones, will drop off at higher frequencies. So my, may work in lower frequency range, doesn't work in higher. So anyway, Pete here, N6QW, and I'll see if I can make a QSO, and, and then we'll record that as well. This is the Drake TR7, serial number 1394.